How would you like to be driving a brand new Honda CRV? Well, just by signing up for Rev Voice, you'll be automatically entered to win. The Honda CRV is one of the highest rated cars in its class, an unbeatable value for safety, comfort, and style. It's got plenty of storage for everything you need to carry and looks great inside and out. So, upgrade your home phone today and you just might upgrade your life with a brand new Honda CRV from NASA Motor Company worth more than $42,000. Call us to sign up for Rev Voice before January 26th. Rev Voice, the better choice. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into NB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. The Prime Minister disappointed with Hubert Ingram's comments. The government considering web shop zoning. The DNA leader says he's also voting no. Plus, we'll take you into the life of a former homeless person. Those stories and much more on the way, and the Kia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. Again for joining us here at NB12. Prime Minister Perry Christie says he's disappointed with former Prime Minister Ingram's public urge to Bahamians to vote no to both questions on Monday's referendum. But Christie said he believes it will backfire. The Prime Minister says Ingram's comments could encourage progressive Liberal Party supporters to vote yes despite their beliefs. Christie told NB12 today that while it is Ingram's right as a Bahamian citizen to voice his opinion, he considers his move purely political. I just don't know now what the Hubert Ingram presence has done to them, you know, because it's like a red flag to the bull. You know, he steps into the picture, makes it political. People who had views about who were, who who bought into the arguments, spiritual arguments advanced, the sociological arguments about the devastating impact of excessive gaming. I think even people who bought into that and suddenly say, man, this has nothing to do with that now. This is to do with the FNM and Hubert Ingram, who had given up politics, coming in to join Minis and making this an FNM PLP affair. That's unfortunate, really unfortunate. And as for the former PM doing an about face, Christie says he's not surprised. Ingram announced earlier that he would not vote in the upcoming referendum, but yesterday he changed his position. Christie said the former prime minister had to publicly state he was voting no after realizing his initial position differed from the free national movements. Christie referred to the move as politics at its lowest. They've taken that notion that if they could pin the PLP into being for yes, through the personalities in the PLP who have identified themselves, and they say no, and that, that the no votes win, then the PLP has suffered a major defeat, and that could catapult them into more recognition in the country. That's what they've done. Christie said it is unfortunate that Ingram, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and the opposition have clouded the social, spiritual and economic arguments for and against gambling. However, he said he will not take Ingram's bait and will not reveal his position on the issue or persuade anyone, including members of his party, how to vote. I have elected and I have said publicly I do not want to influence the people who support me by saying, oh, I'm going to vote as my leader did, so I have been, I have not spoken about my vote and how I voted. People could presume, people could anticipate, people could project, but the fact of the matter is I have not spoken about it because I genuinely wanted to wait to see what the results would be. Christie says that he knows of many PLP supporters who intend to vote no on January 28th and many FNMs, including former FNM MP and current Vote Yes Bahamas spokesperson Teresa Moxie Ingram, who will vote yes. Christie said the government's intention with a referendum is to deepen and widen the democracy and give Bahamians a voice. Well, one day after Ingram urged Bahamians to vote no, leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Branville McCartney, revealed that he too will be voting no. Like Ingram, McCartney recently told reporters that he would not be voting in the upcoming poll. However, the DNA leader revealed in a statement today that he has changed his mind. McCartney says while he feels the process is illegal and flawed, the referendum will still happen and government will have to take certain steps depending on the outcome of the vote. 
He added that he is not comfortable leaving this process up to the government to do as it pleases. Furthermore, he says the Christie administration's actions and comments in recent months have proven that it cannot be trusted. As a result, McCartney says he will be voting no. Well, with just three days before the referendum, the leader of the FNM is crying shame on the government for allowing web shop bosses to buy the votes of Bahamians, in his opinion. He expressed outrage at last night's Vote Yes event at Arawak Key. Dr. Minutes believes it's a threat to democracy. Paige McCartney reports. FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis says the Prime Minister is deceiving Bahamians by saying that he's got no horse in the race. He says just days before the January 28th poll, it seems apparent to him that the Prime Minister owns the racetrack. Minnis is questioning Prime Minister Christie's competence, saying that he doesn't believe the Prime Minister knows what he's doing with this gambling referendum referring to the Prime Minister's comments that it was a good day when web shop owners and workers marched to Parliament, Minnis said it's obvious the Prime Minister is on the side of numbers bosses. The whole process has been bungled. The whole process has been bungled, all right? And um, the Prime Minister himself appears somewhat confused. He's creating, changing rules as he go along. Um, I think he is clueless. When you look at the Prime Minister's comment that he has no horse in it, everything he said points to him completely owning the race. Every horse in that race is his. He owns the racetrack. It is quite evident. So everything he says is contradictory. Minnis said he was shocked by the display of what he called bribery at Thursday's Vote Yes event. Organizers gave away free televisions, phone cards, and other gifts. Minnis said the blatant gift giving just days before a national poll is a serious threat to democracy. I'm very disappointed um, when I look at um, the rally that they had last night to see that um, the number boys are giving away gifts to individuals. This is a form of bribery. We have fought against this type of process from the 60s. We know that individuals are being paid. Um, to campaign. Individuals, I'm told, they are paid via their account. And for those who don't have an account, I encourage to open an account with the various web shop. This is very, very dangerous because democracy is truly under siege. And if this continues today and they get away with it today, what's to stop it from moving forward? The voting process that we fought for, for freedom of choice and freedom to vote, we would no longer see again. The government has said that it does not want this gambling referendum to boil down to politics, with Prime Minister Christie continuously calling on Bahamians to vote their conscience on the matter. However, Minnis said it's the Progressive Liberal Party that has made it political. The FNM has always stated our position. We have not been out there actively campaigning, etc. If you look at those who are out there, many of them are PLPs who are out there on the road, etc. Um, individuals, and I look in, in the Kalani constituency, there are individuals who were actively campaigning against me. They're out there campaigning again. The FNM leader says in the end he wants Bahamians to vote how they feel as long as they go out and vote. Reporting for MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. If the Bahamian people vote yes to regulating and taxing web shop gaming, those licensed operations may be in for changes to the way they run their businesses. One of those changes could be in the form of limiting the proliferation of web shops in low-income areas. Christina McNeil spoke to the chairman of the gaming board, who explains why zoning may be a crucial issue. Here, here, and here. And those are only a handful of the web shop operations found within the greater Chippingham area. That's something Gaming Board Chairman Dr. Andre Rollins says government will have to seriously consider if the majority of Bahamians vote yes toward regulating the industry. If you look around, the majority of web shops are in residential areas where people pass at least three locations on their way to and from home. While it could be seen as convenience for those who participate in web shop gaming, Dr. Rollins says it may also contribute to addiction. If in fact we do go in that direction, I'm very concerned that uh, we have tremendous number of web shops in significant, really exclusively uh, for the most, uh, I don't want to say, well, to be, to be clear, 
there are a preponderance of web shops in the lower income communities. Communities where persons are having um, already significant difficulties meeting the uh, very challenging financial circumstances many Bahamians are finding themselves in. Are we going to, uh, and this is where the regulatory body comes in, are we going to look out for the interests of those communities and say, we do not want to put so many of these web shops in all of these communities so that everywhere they look, left, right, in front of them, behind them, there's a web shop. Because you are now uh, so influencing them that the, the, the concerns about addiction and um, um, further harming the financial welfare of those who can least afford that um, uh, the, the 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 negative impact that 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 could occur in the case of those who become addicted, uh, we are we are thrusting it on them. If the referendum passes on Monday, Dr. Rollins says he would recommend that government be as socially responsible as possible in regard to where web shops are set up. My recommendation is going to be that if the referendum passes, that we be as responsible uh, as we possibly can, socially responsible, to ensure that we are not putting an undue, uh, we're, not, we're not seen as harming those who really can least afford that financial harm. What can be the density of the uh, web shops in any community. How many gaming houses per um, square mile are, are permissible? You cannot have a situation where there's such a high concentration per square mile that you know you are just, you know, it's like an elephant on somebody's chest. They can't breathe. Everywhere they go, they're just being, you know, stifled by the presence of these things. So um, the geograph geography of gaming is something that I think that we must consider as regulators, will be something that I'll speak to uh, in the House of Assembly and something I'm uh, obviously going to urge my um, colleagues in the House of Assembly to appreciate. Referring to other jurisdictions, Dr. Rollins says the geography of gaming is designed to protect the most vulnerable from being bombarded by opportunities to gamble. If you think about gaming in, in, in other jurisdictions, there are gaming houses or casinos. You have to, you have to physically get dressed, not physically, but let me say this. You have, to, you have to go through the trouble of dressing up, getting in your vehicle, and going to that destination, as opposed to opening up your front door, walking outside across the road and playing a game. Rollins, who has not said whether he'll be voting yes or no on Monday, has said that if the gaming referendum passes, he expects the full liberalization of the gaming industry for Bahamians to be inevitable. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Well, still to come on NB12, we sit down with a homeless man to talk about life on the streets of New Providence.